Hi data workers, Kwame here and welcome back. In this video, I will outline the data analysis process by using it to analyze the financial performance of the top global automakers for the 2022 fiscal year and see just how far Tesla in particular has come from being a fledgling car manufacturer not too long ago. As you will see, the American automaker is the real deal and its overall performance might even surprise you. I am carrying out this analysis using the data analysis process so that you have an idea of the methodical approach that data analysts typically use for their projects, either consciously or unconsciously. Let's begin with a quick overview of the data analysis process. There are six primary steps. The first step is to define the question. This involves defining the objectives and formulating clear specific questions that your analysis aims to answer including identifying the data needed to address it and defining the metrics or indicators to measure the outcomes. Understandably, defining the question and everything that it entails sets the direction for the entire process, so it's important that we get this step right. The second step is to collect the necessary data. There are many ways to do this, including carrying out surveys and interviews, making observations, and extracting from existing databases. Step three is to clean or cleanse the data of any errors and inconsistencies that may or can impede the accuracy of the results. Data quality and reliability is paramount in the data analysis process. Step four is where the fun begins. It involves analyzing the data we collected and cleaned and applying mathematical and statistical techniques to discover patterns, relationships, or trends. Popular tools used by data analysts like myself are Microsoft Excel and SQL, as well as Python and R programming. The fifth step involves interpreting the results from our analysis in a way that's easy to understand. This can include creating charts, graphs, or other visual representations of the data. The effective use of popular data visualization tools such as Microsoft Excel, Tableau, and Power BI can make complex data more understandable by providing a clear picture of the findings. And finally, the sixth step is to share the results, or put another way, tell a story with the results. This involves communicating the findings of the analysis in a way that is engaging and easy to understand for both technical and non-technical audiences so that they can be used to make data-driven decisions. Now that I have highlighted the data analysis process, here's how I used it to assess the performance of the top global automakers in 2022. For step one, the question I want answered is how well the top global automakers performed financially in the 2022 physical year. To answer this question, I need to know the sales volume and workforce of each automaker as well as their revenue, operating profits, and net profits. For step two, I determined that the best place to get the relevant data is from each automaker's financial statements and disclosure reports for the 2022 fiscal year, which are readily available online. I then inputted the collected data into an Excel spreadsheet with appropriate headings. I have the name of the automaker or automotive group in one column, the country of incorporation in another column, and their sales volume, revenue, operating profit, net profit, and employee count in separate columns. For step three, I identified an inconsistency while collecting the financial data. Not all of the financial statements are denominated in the same currency, the US dollar in this case. To make the data consistent across the board, I had to find versions of the financial statement denominated in the desired currency for the affected automakers, or I had to manually convert the financial figures using historical exchange rates. For step four, I decided to use Excel to analyze the data rather than another application, as it's the most convenient and practical tool for such a project. Had I been working with a large set of data, then I might have used SQL or Python. Great indicators of a company's financial performance are its revenue, operating profits, and net profits. However, these metrics only provide a general overview of overall performance. Profitability margins and productivity metrics are more informative as they help reveal just how well a company has been run. Therefore, I determined that the best metrics for this project are operating margin, which I got by dividing each automaker's operating profit by its revenue, 
net profit margin, which I got by dividing net profit by revenue, operating profit per vehicle, which I obtained by dividing operating profit by vehicle volume, net profit per vehicle, obtained by dividing net profit by vehicle volume, revenue per employee, obtained by dividing revenue by employee count, operating profit per employee, obtained by dividing operating profit by employee count, and finally, net profit per employee, which I got by dividing net profit by employee count. Once the financial calculations are done, I want to give each automaker points based on how they ranked in each performance metric, add up the points, and assign a letter grade based on their total points. The points are in five point increments, with the highest of 70 points going to the automaker ranked first and the lowest of five points going to the automaker ranked last. The maximum any automaker can get across all metrics is 630 points. There are two ways to assign the letter grade to the overall score, either manually or by using an advanced function such as VLOOKUP or IF statements. Ideally, you would want to use either one of those functions when working with a large set of data so that you don't have to go through the trouble or pain of manually inputting the data. VLOOKUP is the most appropriate function for assigning grades. Here's how I went about it. First, I created a table containing the rank for each automaker for every metric. Second, I created a second table that contains the score for every automaker based on the rank they received for each metric, and then totaled their scores across all the metrics. Next, I created a third table containing the grade boundaries, the lowest raw mark score for each grade, and the actual letter grades. Finally, I clicked on the first automaker's total grade cell and inputted the VLOOKUP formula as follows. Type VLOOKUP, open bracket, and then click on the raw mark for the first automaker. Next, type comma, and then highlight the table array that contains the lowest raw mark scores and letter grades, and then lock the selected range into place by pressing F4. Finally, type comma, and then type 2, which is the column number in the table array that contains the letter grade we want displayed. Close the bracket, press enter, and then autofill the grade results for the remaining automakers. That's it for step 4. As you can see, I only had to perform basic financial and statistical calculations to get the results I needed. A lot of data analytics projects are like this. For step 5, I decided to present the results of my analysis using the features provided by plain old Microsoft Excel. While not as sophisticated as Tableau or Power BI, both of which are specifically made for data visualization, Excel can be a very convenient option for many data analytics projects. An easy and effective way to illustrate the rankings of the automakers is to use a simple bar chart. All I have to do is select the range of data I want graphed, click the Insert tab at the top, and then select the column and bar chart option to get the bar chart. Next, sort the bars in descending order and edit the graph to your liking. I ended up with something like this. Repeat the process to get the charts for the other profitability metrics. For the letter grade, a two column table with the automakers in one column and their respective grade in the second column will suffice. Finally, for step six, I decided to share my results by writing a detailed report and publishing it on my automotive website for my audience to read, making sure to go over each chart and provide background information as to why each automaker received the rank they did for each performance metric. I am going to quickly go over the results with you to show you how I might have shared it had I been presenting it in person to the decision makers of a company. Of course, in such a case, I would have needed to create a detailed dashboard using Tableau, Power BI, or another data visualization tool, or alternatively, put together a comprehensive PowerPoint presentation to provide visual aid for my audience. But on to my key findings. As you can see from my analysis, Tesla punched well above its weight in 2022. It ranked in the top five in five out of the nine profitability and productivity metrics Despite selling fewer than 20% of the vehicles that Toyota and the Volkswagen Group sold, the two largest automakers in the world by sales volume, it earned nearly as much operating and net profit as they did. Much of the same can be said about BMW and Mercedes-Benz, 
And that's because the three automakers only sell high priced luxury vehicles rather than affordable vehicles for the masses, which gives them an advantage over full line manufacturers like Toyota, Volkswagen, General Motors, and all the other automakers I evaluated. Understandably, Tesla had the highest profit margin, highest operating margin, highest profit per vehicle, second highest operating profit per vehicle, and second highest operating and net profit per employee. Those results are good enough to place Tesla in third place in the overall rankings, beaten only by first place Mercedes-Benz and second place BMW. Stellantis was the best performing full line automaker, achieving results comparable to Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Tesla. Very impressive indeed for a large automaker. Big name players like Toyota, Volkswagen, General Motors, Ford, and Honda all had middling results, while the worst performing automakers were Nissan and Renault, both of which practically flunked in nearly every profitability metric. Let me know if you find any of these results surprising. The key takeaway of this analysis is that in the automotive industry, size doesn't matter. Sure, companies can achieve incredible economies of scale by having massive sales, but it's important to consider just how profitable each of those vehicles are made and sold. In that regard, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Tesla proved that despite having a relatively small sales volume, they can outperform nearly every other global automaker in the metrics that matter the most. Tesla is the true standout here because it has only been making cars for just 19 years as of 2022, whereas most automakers have been pumping out vehicles for over 70 years. So in case you're still sitting on the fence about its future viability, this upstart is no smoke and mirrors. It's the real deal. It's time to get off the fence. We have come to the end of this data analysis walkthrough. In summary, I use the data analysis process to analyze the financial performance of the top global automakers, highlighting the requirements for each step of the process. If you want to try out the exercise on your own, you can find the link of the Excel raw data in the description. Share your thoughts or any questions you have in the comments below, and make sure to like this video and subscribe to get more content like it. See you later.